Hey everyone, welcome to the second episode of Kenobi. Here's the breakdown, we got a lot to talk about, so let's jump right into it. And of course at the end I'll give you my review of the episode and what I really thought. Prepare for more videos that will focus on little tidbit topics as well. So without further ado, let's begin. Obi-Wan lands on Dayu, and we learn this is a crime-ridden world where secrets are kept. Kind of like what happens on Dayu stays on Dayu. So upon landing, Obi-Wan speaks to Qui-Gon Jinn, but of course gets nothing back. Asking for guidance as a clone trooper can be seen begging for credits. Now, this clone is a 501st trooper. This was one of the clones fighting at the Jedi Temple with Anakin, later called Vader's Fist. They became obsolete to the Emperor, as Palpatine didn't care anymore for soldiers who could fight, but rather, he cared about sheer size of his army. Which is why he was conscripting anyone to enlist in becoming a stormtrooper. He doesn't recognize Obi-Wan, most likely because he's drunk and doesn't really seem to be all there. It definitely made me sad seeing the clone trooper there, but it was absolutely cool to see him nonetheless. The Empire doesn't want clones, and now they want stormtroopers. They want their new stormtroopers in place of the old. Obi-Wan asks a spice seller if she knows where his daughter is, and she says he'll never find her again if she's here. So this gives us an understanding of what this planet is like. It's much like Nar Shadda or something like that. Full of crime, scum, and villainy. She offers him different spice, Kessel, Glitter Stim, or Felucian. Now, Felucia is the planet that we saw in Revenge of the Sith, where Aayla Secura fell to the clones obeying Order 66. She hands Obi-Wan a bottle of spice on the house and leaves. This will come in handy later. As he follows the boy who scams him to the fake Jedi, Obi-Wan discovers the little operation being pulled on people as Haja, the fake Jedi, pretends to mind trick pilots at the gate for credits. It's all a big smoke and mirror scam, there's magnets involved, and Kenobi exposes him. So long story short, Haja agrees to help Obi-Wan find Leia as he guides him to his next path. We get a bit of a breaking bad scene as spice and such are being created in this lab, where Obi-Wan causes a chemical reaction, creating a distraction, and leaves through another door. Now this part was kind of funny because he's approached by a Zabrak and a man. Now of course Zabrak is the same species that Darth Maul is, so Obi-Wan coming face to face with another well, Darth Maul species was interesting. He fights them and we get a bit of a Johnny Lawrence Cobra Kai moment as he's super rusty fighting in hand-to-hand -hand combat or really doing anything. He's still not using his force powers, but finally beats them. Now the guys who took Leia find Obi-Wan there and they hold him at blaster point. They were waiting for him. This was all a trap set up by them, ordered by Reva. Now they recognize that Obi-Wan is just a man now, quite astonished that a Jedi can even bleed. They take his lightsaber and Obi-Wan throws the ball of spice that the girl earlier gave him on the streets. He takes his lightsaber back, gets out of there and rescues the apprehensive Leia who eventually trusts him. Reva finds the drugged takers and sets out to find Kenobi when she's stopped by the Inquisitors who are furious with her taking the child of an Imperial Senator for bait. Reva reveals that she found Bail Organa has ties to Kenobi from the Archives. So Obi-Wan fought alongside Bail in the Clone Wars, they did so on Christophsis and much more, and so she thought that by taking his kid, Kenobi would be called upon, kind of bringing him out of hiding. Now she was right of course, her tactics are brash and they're really not liked by the Inquisitors as she just does everything herself and doesn't run anything by them, showing no respect for hierarchy or command, but at the end of the day, she does get results. Now why wouldn't Vader just think of doing something like this? I don't really know, maybe it's plot armor, or maybe Vader wouldn't go to those lengths. The Grand Inquisitor learns that she's doing this to gain favor from Vader, as the fifth brother informs him. He reveals that she's the lowest of them and that she came to them when she was in the gutter. Her position is only solidified because of her abilities, but all the powers in the world won't mask her true identity of being a former Jedi. Now the abilities I think he's referring to are simply her ability to mind probe, to basically find out whatever someone is thinking, or their memories, or what they're hiding. So they fight over Kenobi and who's going to take him in, and we see how little respect she has for all of her leaders in command. She never does what she's told, she's entitled and extremely abrasive. So she orders a bounty hunter on Kenobi by every bounty hunter on the planet, sending a swarm towards him, but also now making it very public that Obi-Wan is there. The Grand Inquisitor does not like this when he finds out. 
As Kenobi moves around with Leia in cloaks, we see a droid that looks like Four Lom. Now this was a bounty hunter that we saw in The Empire Strikes Back. I'm not entirely sure if it's the same droid, but it certainly is the same make. Leia sees the beacon with Obi-Wan's photo. She suspects Obi-Wan is behind all of this and the reason she was captured. Leia runs away and Obi-Wan seems to have a lot of trouble catching a 10 year old child. This was probably my least favorite part of this episode as it was just a bit too comical. It's like Leia has some magical powers that don't allow grown men to capture her. Anyways, they make their way to the rooftops where Obi-Wan is shot at by one of the bounty hunters and we get Batman Reva doing force imbued parkour to get to Kenobi. She force pushes a beam just like we did in Jedi Fallen Order, so hopefully we get to see Cal Kestis, or maybe this is just a move that well, everyone uses. Leia jumps off the roof and falls almost to her death where Obi-Wan uses the force, finally for the first time in 10 years, and just barely saves her. So this to me was done really well, as he's very rusty at this time. You know, something as simple as levitating little 10 year old Leia was very difficult and happened at the last second. So Haja, the fake Jedi, becomes a fanboy when he realizes that Obi-Wan is the old Jedi Master from the Clone Wars. And he finds this out by, of course, everyone having all of these holograms and pads of Obi-Wan's face saying that he's wanted. He helps Kenobi by allowing him to find a way out of there, saying, go to the top of this place and you'll have a ship that can get you out of here. He tries to hold Reva back, but of course she mind probes him like Kylo Ren did to Poe, and she finds out that Kenobi is here and where he's going. Obi-Wan and Leia have a moment together, and he says that she reminds him of someone. I think he's talking about Padme, her mother. Some may think it's about Satine, but I really thought it was about Padme. Reva shows up, and Kenobi tells Leia to go to the ship, that he's going to be right behind her, and if he's not, and she should leave without him. So this is the part that gets interesting. Reva informs Obi-Wan that Vader is expecting him, that she's going to bring him to Vader. And Obi-Wan has a bit of a meltdown. He learns that Vader is alive. This is the first time for 10 years he thought that Anakin was dead. Now you might be wondering how he knows Vader is Anakin. Well, it's very simple. In Revenge of the Sith, when Obi-Wan was looking at the security recordings of the events in the Jedi Temple during Order 66, he saw Anakin slaying Jedi Masters, Knights, and Padawans. He came across the final recording in front of Yoda, where he saw Palpatine in the Jedi Temple with Annie, telling Lord Vader that he has done well and to rise. He knows Anakin's Sith Lord name is Darth Vader, and so hearing it again from Reva made him realize Anakin is still alive. He's shocked because after all that he did to Anakin in their duel on Mustafar, he didn't expect anyone to survive that. He's hurt, surprised, scared, and hopeful that maybe he can talk sense into Anakin perhaps. Maybe this will lead to the moment where, eventually, Kenobi goes to Vader and tries to turn him to the light, leading to Return of the Jedi Episode 6, where Vader tells Luke, Obi-Wan once thought as you do. Reva says Vader is alive, Anakin Skywalker is alive. Now in my opinion, she shouldn't know Anakin is Vader. Nobody does. But it seems her ability to read minds even transcends Vader's mental privacy, perhaps. That or she saw him attacking Jedi during Order 66 and she just kept the secret to herself. But I feel like it's something that maybe Palpatine would have figured out or Vader would have sensed that she knows. But then again, he never sensed, you know, Tarkin or Thrawn knowing who he truly is or at least having a good idea. Whatever the answer is, if Vader found out that she does know that he is Anakin Skywalker, he would terminate her in a flash. Vader did not take that lightly. Anyone who knew that he was Anakin, or even saw him without his helmet on, would be destroyed. So the Grand Inquisitor walks in and is really mad with Reva. He tries to claim Kenobi for himself, and so she blindsides him and impales him Darth Maul to Qui-Gon Jinn style. He keels over and Kenobi runs away, shocked as he says the name, Anakin, where Vader opens his eyes in pure rage and we see his Sith red eyes aware of Kenobi now. End of episode. Okay, so obviously seeing Vader, seeing Hayden Christensen was absolutely epic. This episode was fun, but it had some moments that I just didn't like. Overall, I feel like it did a very great job at portraying Obi-Wan's rustiness with the Force and him overcoming that slightly. Reva shouldn't know who Anakin is, also her revealing to Kenobi that Vader is alive is something that I feel should have been maybe reserved for someone else, someone maybe a little bit more important, or perhaps someone we know a little bit better. 
Or if it was going to be her, it could have been done in a bit of a different way, maybe not so rushed or not done by her in general. There's a bit too much entitlement on her end, and I think we will find out, of course, why her character was written this way. Clearly, the Inquisitors are annoyed with her already, so of course we will be too. Now, I don't think the Grand Inquisitor is dead. There's just no way. Two reasons. It would retcon rebels, and of course, that's just not going to happen. And the second is, Powans have two stomachs, so he's probably just in pain a bit, but nothing a back the tank won't fix. So he'll probably just be fine. And then he'll, you know, come for Reva, maybe at the end of the show or something. All in all, the episode was cool, a bit slow in some parts, but finally we have Obi-Wan using a bit of the Force, and of course we have our first shot at Vader. Now, of course, the next episode I think will be all about Vader, and I am all for it. I cannot wait for that. I am very excited to see Hayden Christensen. I'm wondering when the flashbacks will resume for uh, Anakin and Obi-Wan. Maybe more dreams, uh, maybe more nightmares, perhaps that Obi-Wan has. Something I would really love to see is Obi-Wan having a happy dream of perhaps Anakin and himself in the Clone Wars. Maybe a good moment where they're fighting side by side as brothers like they always were, but then it transcends immediately into him being Vader or him on Mustafar burning. Whatever it might be, just something that turns into a nightmare from a nice happy dream. And that way we could get a cool flashback of young Anakin and Obi-Wan in the Clone Wars. Maybe some scenes we've never seen in live action. Let me know what you thought of this episode. Did you like it? Did you not like it? What would you give it out of 10? Thanks for watching this video. Leave a like if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you all in the next one. Until then, remember, my fellow Jedi and Sith friends, the Force will be with you. Always.